Hi, welcome to my studio. It's Dina Tollefson. I'm so glad that you're here. So today's topic is super exciting to me. It's, it's how to get into an art gallery, how to approach an art gallery for representation, and all the steps and some advice and some things that might be helpful to you. So on my Instagram account, I've been getting a lot of direct messages and indirect messages um, asking, you know, how do you get into an art gallery? Or, you know, where do I start? What are the first things to do? And so um, I thought what I could do is share a little bit about my story and, uh, and then give some tips and some things that work for me. And I hope that they will also be helpful to you and work for you. So um, I am a professional artist. I do this full time for the last five years or so. And prior to that, I had been working as an engineer, at, yes, an engineer, and, um, and doing, starting in 2000, I got into my first art gallery. So I've been represented by art galleries since 2000, and am currently started with one gallery, and then now, um, over the years now, I'm in uh, galleries in my hometown, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, uh, Rock Island, Illinois, Madison, Wisconsin, um, San Diego, California, and Santa Fe, New Mexico. And um, all of these galleries are, are very important to me. Very, um, what they do is they connect the, um, the gallery owner and the gallery uh, people who work at the gallery. What they do is they get to know the artist and the work, and they will be able to communicate to the collectors that come in and say, um, say all the things that you might want to say as an artist, and they they can take care of that. They can do the transactions, take care of shipping, and all the things, and get that artwork to the collectors that uh, that they're looking for. And it allows you, as the artist, to really you know stay in your studio and and create more work and really just be able to focus on that aspect. And for me, that is I think the most appealing is that it allows me to do what I enjoy doing the best, which is actually just making the art. So I thought what we would do is, I've got some colors mixed up here, and I thought what we can do, I'm gonna mix up some uh, variations of this color to go on this painting that I'm working on, this new tree series painting. And I thought what we can do is I'll uh, talk a little bit about some of the tips and some of the advice while I'm painting. And I'm hoping that you will write me a comment, uh, tell me what you think of uh, some of this advice. And if you have used some of this advice also, and, uh, and then also some of the advice that you might offer might be very, also very helpful to other people who are watching and, and reading the comments. So, um, so the key here is to also remember that there are many ways to, um, to sell your work and to get your work out there. And art galleries are one of those ways. Of course, there are other things like eBay and Etsy and um, individual studio visits, um, selling through your website, selling um, you know, through your studio, those type of thing. And those are all valid and excellent ways. Um, uh, outdoor festivals, the festival circuit. I have a lot of artist friends who make a great living uh, literally just on the festival circuit. So um, it's a thing where you, know, you want to decide what is going to work best for you. Uh, for me, personally, um, I just work exclusively through art galleries, and that's what has worked, um, I guess, been the most helpful for me and, and, has, um, and has worked for me over all the years. And so I want to hopefully pass on some of that uh, information and, and help you. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started here with uh, mixing up some color, and let's talk about getting into a gallery. So I'd say that the first piece of advice that I have is to have, make sure before you approach a gallery, have at least 10 artworks, at least 10, that are of a similar style. So if you're a painter, make sure that you have 10, at least 10 paintings, which are similar in the way that like they might all be landscapes or um, they might all be painted in similar set of colors, something uh, that they would have some type of a motif that would tie them together where someone would look and say, oh, I can see that those all go together. And the reason for that is the gallery owners uh, will be establishing a reputation with their clients with you. And they want, ideally, they want it so that when you walk into a gallery, you can look across the room and say, oh, there's a, and then, you know, insert your name here, kind of a thing. Uh, I, I recognize this artist because I can see a consistent style. 
So that's pretty much the first thing. So once you have, um, and whether, let's say it's pottery or it's sculpture that you do, um, you know, you'd maybe want to have 10 sculptures that are all similar in, in the thing so that it's identifiable as yours. What the thing to avoid would be, um, say, uh, bringing in um, one maybe very real, hyper-realistic painting and then bring in another um, abstract painting and then something else that's non-representational, uh, something that was painted uh, very emotionally, and then something else that was done with a lot of precision. What you want to do is try to have um, a similar look uh, to your thing. So that's the first thing, is uh, having at least 10 artworks of a similar style. So then when the gallery sells your first work and they ask you for more, uh, you'll be able, they'll know, and they'll feel confident knowing that you're going to be bringing something similar so it will um, make a cohesive look in the gallery. So if you think in terms of a gallery being a business, which it is, um, what I kind of an analogy I like to think about um, with galleries is that uh, think of a gallery like a clothing store. So let's say that you need to get, um, oh, you want to get a new pair of pants. And so uh, if you go, for example, to, I'll just name some stores like Kmart or Kohl's or The Gap or Neiman Marcus or Saks Fifth Avenue, um, you could buy jeans at any one of those stores, but you're going to pay more at one store, for example, like the designer stores, you're going to pay more for those jeans than you would at the discount store or, or, um, or you'd pay more at the department store than you would at the discount store. And then at the luxury store, you're going to pay the most. And then you might think, well, why do I pay the most at these other stores? Um, it's, it's that way with galleries. The galleries will differentiate themselves in their price points of what kind of art they offer. So entry-level galleries might be selling artwork, and I'm just going to throw some numbers out. Maybe they sell work $500 to $1,000 in price but nothing more, nothing higher than that. And then next next kind of gallery might be selling work in the, you know, say $1,000 to $5,000 range. And some things will be higher, some things will be lower, but most things in those range. And then another, another step up of gallery might be $10,000 paintings and sculptures and other uh, works up to say $20,000, $50,000. And then another tier of gallery uh, the artwork might, the smallest and least expensive artwork might start at $100,000. So if you think of those and kind of compare those to how, um, you know, you can buy a painting at any of those places, but what you're going to pay for it is different. And so a gallery is going to have artists in their roster, or sometimes they'll say a stable. Uh, they're going to have artists that are selling at that particular price point of where they are. So a tip of looking for a gallery is you want to think about where is your artwork for a certain size or a certain style or, um, you know, if it's sculpture, uh, you know, a certain size, paintings a certain size, you might look at that and say, okay, um, uh, my work, it, you know, fits in here, but um, it's more expensive than this gallery. Well, if it's more expensive than the gallery, then you can cross that off your list right away because the goal is when you go into a gallery, you want to be um, kind of in the middle of their price range or towards the bottom, but you don't want to be the app, you know, like way below the bottom, um, but you want to be there and then you want to have room to grow and eventually raise your prices. Uh, what the thing to avoid is don't even waste time with applying or, or looking into galleries that are way above your current price range. Um, you, can, you can be looking at those galleries and thinking and planning for those galleries for years out um, over time as your, prices range, uh, your price range changes, but the goal would be to try and find something that is in your current price range and then going from there. So if you are, let's say you're a new student right out of school or you've been a hobby painter, a hobby sculptor, that type of thing, or maybe you've been selling a few things on eBay, on Etsy, or to some friends, that type of thing, then what can work well is to try and go into an entry-level gallery or a gallery that's going to be 
in the lower price range because that's a natural fit for your work. So it can be intimidating when you go out and look at the uh, go out and look on the internet and it's like, oh, you know, how would I know what to go for? Well, the other big thing is is to um, is to try and pick first a gallery that is close by you geographically, physically close by you. The reason for that is because uh, when you go in and you look at some green going on here, um, when you go into the gallery, uh, you want you want to um, first uh, establish a relationship with the gallery owner if this is your first gallery, or even if it's your second gallery. You can you want to pick something geographically close. A lot of times, galleries want to be the only gallery representing you in a city, so kind of keep that in mind. But the nice thing is, no matter where you live, there should be an art community nearby that you can get to. So if you live in Arizona, there should be something. If you live in Wyoming, you, you should be able to find something. Live in you know Iowa, you should be able to find Texas. You know wherever you live, um, you or, or you know around the world, there's going to be something that's close by to you. And the key would be to start local, and the reason for that is because when you're selling your artwork, you are really selling your reputation, and your reputation is something that will grow over time. And if you think of it like, you know, you start local and then you move uh, regionally and then you can move nationally and then you can move internationally. So it doesn't make sense that a, um, it does not make sense that an artist would be only selling, for example, internationally, but yet they haven't had any sales or very few sales in their own country. Um, that's just kind of unusual. Usually what happens is, and it's anything's possible, of course, but you want to be thinking in terms of starting local. And the ways that you can start local would be that you can um, do an internet uh, research, uh, do a Google search, and find out uh, when are the art festivals going to be around nearby you. Um, you can go to those, even if you're not um, participating in them. You can walk around and you can meet some artists. And you can start to develop some friendships with people uh, because that's really what um, what a key is, is, is getting to know other artists. Uh, what galleries are they in? Who do they trust? That kind of thing. And then when you find a gallery nearby you, um, you know, say within maybe, maybe near, nearby, it might be, you know, 20 miles away or 50 miles away. But when you find it 100 miles away, uh, hopefully it'll be closer than that. Um, but when you find a gallery, um, go go on into the gallery, and then um, and take a look inside, and then um, look and see the art that they have. Look at the prices of the art. Now, some of this stuff, this research, you can really do by going and doing a Google search. Look at the website of the gallery. Uh, try and pick a gallery that's going to um, be active on social media. That's always a plus. But uh, you can look and see um, if they list the prices of the work, then you can look and see. And if they don't, you can do a little bit of looking and see if the aesthetic of those artists matches with your aesthetic. So there is a gallery literally for everyone. If you make angry art, <laughs> there is an angry art gallery. Uh, if you make, uh, like my work is very whimsical and playful and colorful. And so I look for galleries that are um, that have whimsical, colorful, happy work. Um, my work would not do well in a, in a like a, an, a gallery that has like a lot of grunge art or anger art or um, you know caricature art that kind of thing because um, because it doesn't match with the aesthetic of what the the gallery owner will curate and will put together a set of artists where everything looks well together and it makes sense. In the same way, like going back to the idea of finding a pair of jeans, uh, when you go and um, go to a store, you're gonna be able to find things that are similar, that look well together, that kind of thing. Gallery owners have that same idea um, when they are putting together their list of who they're representing. 
And the idea also is you want to find a gallery uh, with somebody that you click with. The gallery owner, uh, you're going to form a relationship of trust with them. You're going to be giving them your work and you want them to... Um, you want them to get along with you and you to get along with them. And that's a really important thing. So you want to just, uh, you know, be yourself. And I remember that when I first started um, back at getting galleries, I thought that I had to look like an artist. And in my mind, I had to uh, lose about 50 pounds and um, and have tattoos and, and smoke cigarettes and, and look, I don't know, at that time in the... Um, uh, um, you know, years ago, then it was like kind of like a grunge look was like the big thing. And, and I thought that that's what all artists look like. And I actually found out to my surprise that um, artists come in all shapes and sizes and um, some wear are cigarette smoking and tattooed and grungy looking and um, wear black wigs and that kind of thing. And other ones look like me and other ones look like my neighbor. And, and you know, literally it's kind of hard to tell you know, an artist, when you look at them on the street, they don't necessarily look any different than anybody else. But that was kind of an eye-opener for me. I thought I had to look a certain way uh, to be an artist and maybe wear all black or that kind of thing. But that's not really true. So so the key is, uh, you know, do your research and, and then uh, kind of figure out what kind of gallery makes uh, or is selling work similar to what you make. Now, um, the other thing is, is to think about a gallery that matches your values. So you want to have, um, you know, be thinking about, you know, the artists that they have there. Do you like the artists that are there if you know them personally or you've heard their reputation? Do you like the art that's there? Because if you like the art that's there, then, you know, chances might be good that, that your work might also fit with the gallery. So, um, so the next thought would be, is you know, how do I actually, how do I actually get the attention of the gallery owner, or, you know, how would I get the gallery to notice me, or how do I even ask them? And that, you know, that's kind of a tricky question because it can be done so many different ways. So something that I've done um, in the past is whenever I have an exhibit, and there's a gallery that I'm interested in, I will send a postcard of that exhibit. Um, to some galleries that I have my eye on and um, and then you know try and build some familiarity that way um, the other thing that you can do is if you especially if it's a local gallery is um, is you can go in and and I recommend that you do this is go inside the gallery and uh, take a look inside and see how do you feel when you're in the gallery do you feel like you know are they are they nice to the customers because you want to work with nice people um, are they, you know, are they rude? Are they nice? You know, how do they treat people? But, um, but what you don't want to do is make demands. When you go in there, um, you know, don't say, oh, you have to take my work or, you know, oh, I'm an artist, you have to represent me. That's kind of off-putting. And um, these gallery owners usually are very busy. They're business owners, um, that kind of thing. And so a lot of times they would want you to make an appointment. But if you just go in there and just check out the gallery and just say hi, be sure to identify yourself as an artist because we as artists, it's like so obvious to gallery owners when an artist comes in because a collector comes in and they will look in the gallery and they will be standing far away. And so the gallery owner knows like, oh, you know, this is a, this is a potential client because they, they're they looking and they're imagining how this is going to look on their living room wall. When we as artists come in, we get up close to the, and start inspecting the artwork that's there. We look at the prices and we start looking at it to figure out how did they make that or you know, what color was that, that kind of thing. And so we're always a dead giveaway, you know, as artists when we go in. So when you go in, you know, uh, if they're talking to a customer, you know, don't interrupt them. Just wait till they're done. Wait till they're done talking. And if they come up and say hi, you know, be sure to give a friendly hi and, and tell them, you know, hey, I'm, I'm an artist. I'm um, seeking representation, and I've come in to take a look, and you know I'm hoping, you know looking to see if we'd be a good fit. And you can tell them a little bit about yourself if you happen to um, have business cards, which is always a good idea. You could leave them your business card and um, encourage them to take a look at your website. But I wouldn't do anything more than that um, when first looking. 
because the idea is that you want to build up a relationship first with that gallery, and um, especially if it's your first. And, and what you can do is uh, go to gallery events. So if they have a, an exhibit, um, maybe a group exhibit, an annual exhibit, maybe they have a holiday exhibit, um, or solo shows, anything like that, attend um, and, um, and don't, don't hand out your business cards there and say, oh, represent me, represent me, because again, that's a thing that's going to turn people off. But go there to support the artist that's there, and you might find that, um, hey, um, you know, you can make a new friendship with another artist and, and that kind of thing. And what will happen is you'll just have these natural conversations with, uh, with people that are there, and they'll find out that you're an artist, and they might ask you about your work and that kind of thing, and it can just kind of naturally evolve from there because, you know, nobody really likes to be pressured, and it's a nice, uh, you know, it's a nice way to do it. Um, now, once you're in galleries and you've been showing for years and that kind of thing, then the approach can be maybe a little bit more. I've, I know over the years I've, I've gotten a little bit more bold with my approach, where um, when I go in, I'll, I'll have done the homework to understand, you know, what kind of price points they have and the other artists that they have, that kind of thing. And then I might be more bold and, uh, you know, ask for representation very early on. But, um, but it's, a, it's a thing where it kind of takes time to build that trust and, and do it over time. And the other thing that you can do now that we've got, you know, a lot of... A lot of um, internet resources is you can if there's a gallery that you like and they're on Facebook or on Instagram uh, follow that gallery and then watch and see what kind of posts do they do what um, you know what are the other artists that they're representing how are they representing them and and if you like the art you know give a thumbs up give a like and maybe give a comment and uh, and you know sometimes relationships can build from that direction as well so definitely, you know, utilize social media and, and do that. So, um, and probably the last topic maybe to talk about today would be uh, pricing. So uh, if you're, um, again, a student or someone just starting out and you haven't sold a lot of your work yet, that's okay. Uh, but the, the key then is to think about, you know, how might I price my work? So, uh, so when you think about pricing your work, um, I personally do a thing which is called a lifetime pricing model. And what that is, is a thing where um, my prices don't ever go down over time. So I price per square inch. So for example, uh, you know, a 30 by 40 painting is going to be a same, uh, the same price no matter um, what it is. So I don't adjust the price. Like if I think this is a better painting than last time, I might raise the price. I don't do that. So if it's a 30 by 40, you know, if that's the price, it's always that price. Or it could go up higher. And if it goes up higher, it goes up higher in all the galleries that represent me. And then and I'll never lower the price over the years. The reason for that is because uh, people will go and look on the internet and see what, you know, what your prices are uh, that the galleries are charging or wherever they find it. And, uh, and it's important to keep that consistency in the price. And, and so, um, so what you can look at is you can, to know what to charge at the beginning, is uh, take a look at other artists that have a similar um, sales record as you do. So if it's somebody kind of just starting out, what are the people just kind of starting out pricing their work at? And uh, for a similar size, uh, that type of thing. Uh, and, and not necessarily thinking about how long did it take you to make it, but more, you know, what are other people selling their work for in a similar kind of gallery? And, and then what you can do is you can say, okay, I'm going to price at that price and maybe even a little bit lower. And then over time, you can raise your prices up over the years. So for me, for example, um, if I had a little painting... This, this tiny little paintings might have started out at like $75. And then now, you know, 15 years later, they're, you know, $350 or $400 for that same painting. So the, the prices, uh, you want to change the prices slowly over time. And you'll know when it's time to change your price and raise it when you can't keep up with demand anymore. So uh, you want to kind of keep at the price that you're, that you're at 
until you're out of inventory or you're struggling to keep up with inventory and then know that that's, that's the time when to raise the price. So, well, listen, I hope that this has been helpful and um, please give me some feedback and I'm so glad that you joined me here today and, and I want to wish you good luck getting into galleries. Please leave me a comment and let me know um, how's it going with you and uh, in your gallery search and if you're already in galleries any other advice you might want to pass on to to people is appreciated and so until next time this is Dina Tollefson bye-bye